In the world of physical culture, few stories exemplify the way in which a rigorous training lifestyle can overcome the harsh realities of incarceration, like that of Tommy Kono's. Of Japanese heritage, Kono was born on June 27, 1930, in Sacramento, California. He would go on to medal in the three Olympics, win six consecutive world weightlifting championships, and set 26 world records, along with seven Olympic records. Kono was also a successful bodybuilder, winning the Mr. Universe titles in 1954, 1955, 1957, and 1961. Before he did all of that, Kono had to endure one of the darkest periods in American history. Like many Japanese Americans, Kono was locked in an internment camp during World War II. However, Kono did not take a victim mentality or decry his situation. Rather, like all men of merit, Kono took strength from struggle. First, the dry desert helped to heal his childhood asthma. Second, he found powerful mentors or heroes to, re to direct him on the path to the success. At the Thule Lake Segregation Center, a future Olympic lifter by the name of Imrik Ishikawa helped establish the Thule Lake Weightlifting and Bodybuilding Club, and he took a young Kono under his wing. Kono's lifting career began with a York 10-in-1 exercise kit purchased by Block 27 of Ward 2. From these obscure beginnings, Kono became the only Olympic weightlifter in history to set world records in four different weight classes, the lightweight class, the middleweight class, the light heavyweight class, and the middle heavyweight class. To attain this level of dominance, Kono maintained that the body does best with short workouts done two to three times a week with less rather than more exercises. In his training for the 1952 Olympics, where Kono would win gold, he trained three days per week with simply four exercises. His routine was as follows, the press for eight sets of three, snatches for eight sets of three, cleans, six sets of one rep, squats, three sets of three reps. For all of these exercises, Kono would use weights that equaled or exceeded world record levels. After stepping away from competition, Kono continued to play a pivotal role in the realm of international lifting. He was the head coach of the U.S. lifting team at the 1976 Summer Olympics. He was also a pioneer in lifting equipment. While competing in the 1960s, Kono came up with bands to support his knees during training sessions. Eventually, these ex bands extended to the elbows. Kono was also instrumental in Adidas developing their low-cut weightlifting shoes. Much of Kono's life in retirement was spent in his adopted home of Hawaii. In that North Pacific place of paradise, Kono was held as an elder statesman of the Iron Community. For more stories from the history of physical culture, click subscribe.